Governor of Burundi State, Babagana Zulum, has promised to continue effort to rescue more residents affected by the flood as the number of deaths cannot be ascertained at the moment. The governor spoke exclusively with TVC News while highlighting affected areas and measures put in place to bring succor to the residents of the state. This flood has affected nothing less than one million people in Borno State. What we did so far as temporary measures is to establish camps. So far we have established about 29 camps and then we have deployed cooks and they have started cooking in these camps. Uh, but most especially what we did is to provide immediate support to, this, to the victims. We decided to give them 10, 10,000 for heads of household. And then we are providing them with food items. That is what we did. But most especially in partnership with the Ministry of Health and Ministry of, Federal Ministry of Health, we decided to establish healthcare centers within the camps. However, uh, these are temporary measures. We shall start distributing food items. Each head of household will receive 25 kg bags of rice and then a, bag, a carton of spaghetti and some condiments so that they will start, you know, cooking by themselves, finding a uh, sustainable solution that shall be taken. Away from that, Senator representing Sokoto East Senatorial District, Ibrahim Lamido, has advised youth from the zone to embrace education. He gave the advice while presenting foreign scholarships to over 100 youth from the eight local government areas that made up the district to study in India. The Senator was represented by member representing Guababaya, Leia Federal Constituency, Isabelo Barura, who said the challenges of insecurity and other vices in the Eastern Senatorial District of Sokoto can partly be addressed to quality education provided for the team in youth in the region. The only remedy, however, to this wrong one is a sound education in Islamic and the Western religion. This cannot be acquired without a reliable funding which is the essence of our gathering here today. 42 students across eight local government areas of the state. Indeed, Senator Ibrahim Lamido's selfless contribution has opened doors to new opportunities, transforming lives and fostering a brighter future for not just members of his zone, but the state and the country as whole. I'll try all my possible best to see that yes, I have made it, inshallah, for my, uh, for my community to be proud of me and to also uh, my family to also be proud of me, inshallah. I thank Almighty Allah, as well my teachers, my parents, for giving me a guidelines to become what I'm, I'm here, what I'm here. A group known as Nigeria Education Emergency Working is calling on both federal and state government to put mechanisms in place that will protect school buildings from attack. The group also frowns at the constant use of school buildings as internally displaced persons camps. During emergencies, senior reporter Olabi Adinusi Fadin is report. International and national non-governmental organizations operating in the education sector in Adamara State are gathered here. The purpose of this assembly by the Nigeria Education Emergency Working Groups is to commemorate the International Day to protect education from attacks. Declaring the event open, Stephen Medugu highlights areas where government needs to strengthen education and protect it from various threats. He commends the Adamara government for prioritizing education and supporting NGOs. Emergencies that brings about attack for education are in so many ways. We have the attack by the insurgents, popularly known as the Boko Haram attack. We also have some emergencies, just like the flood that we are experiencing currently is also 
posing some challenge that attacks school. On his part, the Commissioner for Education and Human Capital Development in Adamawa State, Umar Pella, speaks on the substantial investment made by the state government in education to secure the future of the younger generation. We need to create a financing window that is not temporal, that is sustainable, and that can make the sector working and protective against any violence. During a panel discussion and an advocacy visit to the office of the Chief of Staff to Adamawa State Governor, the Nigeria Education Emergency Working Groups outlined specific areas requiring more attention from the government. The Chief of Staff, Edgar Amos, commends the NGOs for their efforts in the education sector. We are determined especially that our children should have access to education, but beyond that they should also have access to education that is qualitative. So we have issues of access and quality as guiding principles for our programs and policies in the education sector. This year's celebration focuses on the renewed commitment to implement and ensure sustainable financing of safe schools in Nigeria. Now, be to question the current economic hardship on its constituents, the lawmaker representing Kawra Namoda bringing Magaji Federal Constituency at the National Assembly, Aminu Jaji, is empowering over 6,000 constituents. The move is aimed at reducing the sufferings of the masses, especially the less privileged widows, orphans, IDPs, and unemployed youths. Your lost Darifai has the details. The rising insecurity of forest state has continued to push its citizens down the poverty line over the years. This has brought untold hardship on the people as farmers can no longer access their farms and businesses no longer thrive for the fear of being killed or kidnapped by the bandits. However, government at all levels are making efforts to ensure that life is meaningful for the vulnerable in the society. Now, this federal lawmaker representing Kaura Namo, the Bidnamo Gaji Federal Constituency, is coming through for members of its constituents. What I mean, Shani is doing for Kaura Namo and Bidnamo Gaji, he is already doing it for more than 10 years across the streets. But today is a special day because uh, people of Jampara, Kaura Namo and Bidnamo Gaji are the people who elected him. So we have to give them special consideration. But this is not new, this is something that I mean, Sanjaji does across the state. We have 3,000 bags of rice. This bag of rice I want to be shared within the constituents of Kaura Namoda and Brenda Mangal. We have uh, 200 tailoring machines. We have uh, about 100 units of knitting machines. We have uh, about uh, 200 units of uh, uh, points of sales. Mr. Jaji also offers scholarship to some youths to encourage education in Northern Zamfara. It's not politics. It's an issue associated with somebody who has people at heart across the state. There is no time that Amino has not engaged himself in ensuring that he meet the welfare of our people. He has been catering for people in all walks of life. So I think what we are witnessing today is not just geared towards any political ambition, but he's meeting one of his basic responsibilities. That is why he decided this time around to bring items, not just food alone, but of course items associated with improving the standard of people economically. The two-time Green Chamber lawmaker urged the beneficiaries to take advantage of the gesture to reduce poverty and joblessness while also intensifying prayers for peace and unity in the state. Thiefless Darufay, TVC News Guso. Now to politics. Member of the House of Representatives representing Kushofe Federal Constituency, Kafila Togbar, organized a three-day constituency outreach. The event themed advancing women political women in political participation. The lawmaker emphasized the critical need for increased female participation in politics. She urged women to step forward and engage actively in the political process, stressing the importance of retaining female representation in both the Senate and the House of Representatives. As we speak today, the level of representation at the National Assembly for women is about 4%. I heard you yesterday where you were saying about 10%. We are not even up to 
10%. So that's the level at which we are. And like I have been advocating that once we are able to ensure that single gender list is not submitted to the electoral body and we have at least one woman in every state, that's where we are even going to be having just 10%.